If cast is good, it's not got a crack, not got anything wrong with it, and it's a good piece of cast iron, you can bring it back to this state. Not in one day. It didn't get rusty in one day. You ain't going to cure it in one day. I go to them sales when I'm home, and that ain't often. I find me a piece of that old rusty stuff, and I turn it over where I can look and make sure, and I say, oh, that says Griswold. Somebody come by and they say, what do you think? I say, it's a piece of junk. Can't use it. I'm going to feed the dog out of it. Give them $2 for it. Take it home. I'm going to get me some hot water, and I'm going to rinse it out first, sort of see, make sure what's happening. Then I'm going to take me one of them cordless drills with one of them rotary brushes on there, and I'm going to go all over this thing, inside, outside, everywhere. Rinse it out with hot water. Put it on that burner, because that rust lives in the bottom. Plumb through the pores. He has done soaked down to the inside. And you got to get it warm so we can get to it. So I look in there, and there's a lot of things been living in this old rascal. He set out there through many a rainstorm. So I tell myself, I am going to take me some salt, and I'm going to cover the bottom of that oven with that salt. It's going to be hot because we've had it warm. I'm going to take a good glove, something that's heat resistant, piece of harness leather, good piece of old leather glove doubled up, and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to go to polishing. Everywhere, inside, outside. And you'll see them salt crystals begin to disappear and you see that rust and you just ain't got nothing left in there but red powder because you have scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. Hot water, pour it out. Back on the burner she goes if it's not hot enough. Rinsed out. We're going to see what it looks like. There's still rust in there. So we're going to use a lubricant this time. Any cheap vegetable oil. More salt. Go back through the same process again. Rinse it out. Pour it out. Dry it. Hey, we're making progress. But it's still got two or three rusty spots in it. So I'm going to take baking soda. I'm going to cover the bottom of that oven. Plumb up. Take me a little vinegar, not much. Pour a little in there till it gets to foaming. It's what I unstop my drains with at the house. It will eat at rust. It's in there. I got me a little old bristle brush, and I mean, I go to scrub it. It's got to be warm, not scalding hot. You'll burn that vinegar out of there. Scrub all them little rusty spots. Rinse it out with hot water, set it back to dry. We look at it and we say, hey, we're awful close. But say you got a piece that is still there. Well, now you will never hear me say this but one time. I'm going to throw it in the dishwasher. Not your Maytag or Whirlpool or any of them things. I'm throwing it in Bertha and putting it on the full rinse cycle. She's going to get a fire. I throw it in there, shut the door. I'm going to let her work on it a while. Then I'm going to get it out and I'm going to start this process all again. But I'm going to let this old thing get good and hot. See if I can't cook some of it out of there. We finally get it clean. Now we got to start the seasoning process just like we did the first time. We got to start it all over. Like I say, it didn't get rusty in one day. You sure ain't going to cure it in one day. It takes a lot of love and practice. People say, I ate your beans the other day, them best beans I ever eaten in my life. Did you cook them in cast iron? I bake beans in cast iron, but I never boil beans in cast iron. You boil beans, and a feller told me, he said, hey, I'm gonna boil, I boiled me some navy beans in there the other day, and he said, there's white, and I put them in there, there's black when I checked them. When you got hot water in something, and it's boiling hard and hard, you're eating at your seasoning, turning it loose, you get a black, oily film on there. You'd think the Valdez Exxon done had a wreck in it sometime. I boiled my beans in old bean pots. Now, I got some of them big old wash pots, 35, 40-gallon pots. You see them sitting in yards. Got flyers growing in them. That is a capital punishment offense. People should be shot for that. If they're not cracked, them things is meant to cook in, fry in, make soap in, or kill a hog. But them are a polished cast that I use. They're silver to bronze on the inside because I've never seasoned them with a coating like this because I'm frying in them or I'm boiling in them. 
I'll boil 400 pounds of beans. Put them in about four of them wash pots. That'll feed 4,000 people. But they're not going to turn seasoning loose because they're not black seasoned. They're just a polished cast that I take a light coat of oil, wipe it out really good. If I'm in a, ain't in a hurry, sometimes I'll take that propane porch and a burner, and I'll burn it dry. Make sure it's good and dry before I store it. I'll turn it upside down in the barn just like that. It'll get a little air. But one thing you got to watch out for, these things in my country that love to crawl under them wash pots and live, and they rattle. And when you turn it over, they bite you. So watch out where you put it. So we know how to buy good cast iron. We know what to look for. Got to have three legs. Got to have a good lid. Got to be smooth. Some of it's so rough, you may have to polish out. And then somebody will tell you, hey, I got a skillet. It's got buildup on the outside about that thick due to many, many years of cooking. I don't know how to get it off. You get it good and hot, you take a putty knife sometimes if you want to work that hard. But if it's got to that shape, it needs a fire bath. Set it in the fire, it'll cook it off. But you lost all your seasoning, remember. But it'll get it back to its original state, clean. Lady told me uh, yesterday, I got a skillet at home. It's warped so bad. When you crack an egg, it tries to run to all, everywhere. It's got a dome in it. A lot of that cast is really old stuff that that has happened to, or it's really cheap piece of cast. But I've seen a lot of them old Griswold pieces that are hundreds of years old that ain't no telling what all they've cooked, and I mean they're as good as gold. But they got a little thin, got a little too hot, and they warped. I don't recommend this to everybody, but I have took some of them that I wanted to save. Get them pretty hot, because you got to get hot. you got to temper cast. Get it good and hot. Set it on a stump out there that'll fit it. And I take a mallet, not a hammer. Beat it slowly. You can't do it all at one time because you're going to have to heat it, let it cool. Reheat it, start over. You ever weld on cast iron or somebody use it? It's a slow process. You got to heat cast, weld it a little while, let it cool, heat it back, weld it again. Same way if it's the inside beveled up. Sometimes you can work that out, but if it's an old thin piece, you'll crack it most of the time. Don't ever be afraid of cast iron. Buy you some. Cook in it, clean it right, store it right, season it every time you use it. Every day, I don't care how many times you use it, season it every time it's done. Make sure you, you get the moisture dried out of it before you store it and cook something. Take one of my cards over here, and then when you get it done, call me and I'll come by and eat. <laughs>